Thank you, Mark. Thank you, um, the Oculture, for, for putting this together again. I'm very happy to be here this year, what is uh, known as the sonic capital of the world, I think. Um, I wrote a little sonic fiction script, so I'm just going to I'm just going to read it and see how it goes. Before I do, this is not normally my voice is a bit more nasal <laughs> than usual, so if I have to stop while reading, I've just been through a horrible. Yes. <laughs> it might help. <laughs> Deaf in one ear too, so <laughs> Okay, so here it goes This is the story of M A man suffering from obscure symptoms Best approximated by the description of a sensation Of hearing without ears The ability of a body to process viscerally And register immediately sonic potential That are consciously inaccessible to it this non-cognitive feeling, whose power he would only grasp much later, is hyperrhythmia and is neither an innate quality of the body nor exclusively dependent on external stimuli. In fact, the condition is significantly more complex. It can be outlined as an incipient sensation able to contain a lingering moment between consciousness and hallucination. In this halted moment, the sufferer accesses unknown energies, subsisting in the virtual realm of sound. Imperceptible pulsations of unspecified scope that might range from a mere instant to a day or a lifetime. Hyperrhythmia had always been a problem for scientific studies of sound perception. Before M's capture and subjection to experiments, the closest psychoacousticians had got to it was in confusing it with absolute pitch perception. In certain types of rats, white-throated sparrows, black-capped chickadees, and rarely humans. It was more myth than reality, but as we learn from San Ra, those of the reality have lost their way. Myth's potentials are unlimited. Hyperrhythmia was defined by the American Non-Standard Holosonics Institute in 2039 as the rare auditory phenomenon in terms of which rhythm for slow events or pitch for very fast ones may be recognized and recreated without external reference. In <coughs> here it goes. In 2043, Professor Traven added to the, the definition that in some cases the identified rhythm does not appear to be an actual perceptual attribute of sound at all or belong to any known time scale. In other words, it is a rhythm that does not yet exist. But this was as far as Moller's scientific apparat apparat apparatuses concerned with the study of subjective perceptual phenomena had been able to go. The real breakthrough came with a transdisciplinary initiative tentatively called the Deep Underground Science Sonology and Futurity Laboratory, DUSAFL, <laughs> it's German, <laughs> a team composed of speculative aestheticians, dubstep shamans, neurophysiologists, Afrofuturists, cosmogeneticists, and cypherpunks. Their mission was to work out and stage a particular project to unveil how rhythm had taken over every aspect of life between 1992 and 2000, and sorry, in 2014. The team knew that the sudden emergence of rhythm had intersected the dawn of the digital age and the arrival of cyberspace, and nothing had ever been the same. By probing and examining rhythmic currents acting on that culture's consciousness, they were hoping to extract valuable intellig intelligence on how to create the first rhythm analytic device, a power machine, sorry, a powerful machine even, that turns sound to a vast cerebral system cap capable of generating thought. Experiments began with the audiovisual analysis of cultural objects, concepts, and processes, a sonology of the history told by drum and bass music, rave culture, the cyborg manifesto interactive art, sonic weapons, and grime-led student protests. The researchers were attuned to science as a highly contingent, incomplete system of collective agents. They all had read and understood 
the chaos theorists, Isabel Stengers and Ilya Prigozhin, and their thesis that the wealth of reality overflows any single language and logical structure. They knew very well that A, a single measure measurement does not grant access to a given reality, and that there is instead an irreducible multiplicity of levels imminent to any system. B, that the strict genealogy of disciplines, species, and systems is scrambled by transversal linkages be between them. And C, that the boundaries between science, fiction, and theory are provisional and utterly permeable. One day they received information about a man thought to be suffering from perfect pitch and to have surrendered to a world of psychosis. M was known underground as an obsessive figure concerned with collecting and superimposing audiovisual footage from old TV shows, news bulletins, political speeches, academic conferences, and piano recitals for no apparent reason. And sometime later, while out hunting for sonic clues, M found an unsigned note tacked to the announcement board in the array space in Toronto. It stated in broken English, Maybe I should make this bigger. It's stated in broken English that when, as a young piano student, he had participated in a series of neurological tests around absolute pitch perception, he had in fact been implanted with a neural program or algorithm designed to trigger an internal generation of melodies that functioned as earworms. The note alleged that 18 years later, a team of experts at DuSafo would be able to interject the program and inactivate the algorithm. Though utterly suspicious and alarmed, the prospect of, ex of excising the sonic aberrations that had been haunting him since was too tantalizing to dismiss. In December 2045, M presents himself at the lab where the real purpose of the note is revealed to him. The team explained that his susceptibility to sonic contingencies might help them with their quest. Refusing to help, he is taken prisoner and subjected to experiments. These include sensory deprivation techniques, the daily simultaneous playing of the title sequence and intro to Sunrise uh, 1974 film Spaces the Place and the track Hydro Theory from Drexkia's 1995 record The Journey Home and a simulation of the Krakatoa volcano explosion, registering over 172 decibel at 100 miles from the source, which he is able to withstand. Atish Bhatia, one of the leading researchers, comments that this is resilience to something so astonishingly loud that it's inching up against the limits of what we mean by sound perception. Experiments continue. M has oral seizures that appear as a strange yet familiar sensation. They are, they are expressed as the overwhelming sensation of a sound arriving from an autonomous source at the same time as being an uncontrollable, integral part of the seizure. Sometimes consciousness is lost during a seizure, while others he enters a super superimposed state of multiple experiences identified by Dr. Sachs as a doubling of consciousness. It can be compared to a feeling of déjà vu, or a dreamlike state, but it is actually a body accessing a multiplicity of space-times all at once. The oral seizures indicate that there may be other approaches to space-time that were not there before. They open up the body to self-referential rhythms, entirely unknown to sonic memory, causing it to vibrate through and through. What the vibrational body can know and feel is not clear or predetermined anymore. Its form, its function, its, its distinctiveness have been destroyed and nullified. This man was chosen because of his obsession with the extrasonic dimension. He seems to have access to realities that cannot be contained in anything like an experience in the phenomenological sense. His misdiagnosed pathology has the power to bring forth the effective emptying of perceptions conscious activity. Indeed, the rhythmic temporal consciousness, sorry, the rhythmic temporal convulsions it enables offer some sense that there are other layers outside lived experience. His pulsating body suggests that actual intentions, decisions, and any sense of self 
are bound by a rhythmic energy that is recognized as contingent, capable of change, mutation, and, and overlapping. This energy intensifies and complexifies relations between living and artificial, actual and virtual, human and sonic, without belonging to either of these elements. Humans and machines do not make rhythm. At best, they play host to it, complying with the contingency of the worlds that it brings to bear. This is manifested as the condition of hyperrhythmia. Hyperrhythmia is a critical moment with the capacity to momentarily restrain and hold back the musician's intent, the scientist's conviction, and the philosopher's drive to knowledge in order to allow for the harnessing of other unknown regions. Belongs to a becoming or, uh, or becoming a gap in chronic time that sidesteps the present moment and eludes its own actualization. It occupies the distance between events, hinting that there is no empty space or void waiting to be filled by human perception. Hyperrhythmia resides between sensed perception and the abstract sphere that encompasses it. It is the vibration prior to becoming sensed action, the power that unearths what risks remain hidden in the cracks of our perception. It enables the detachment of a body from a specific mode of experience and the triggering of a non-sensory and non-human transformation of perception. The condition cannot be said to belong to the body per se, the way sensory perception is owned by a subject. Rather, it is understood as a vibrational, shape-shifting force that assumes and absorbs different carriers, a self-generating event surpassing the limits of human knowledge to generate its own life forms, space-times, and worldviews. The experimenters established that M is in fact a human occurrence of hyperrhythmia. They use speculative analysis to understand his mysterious condition and to channel his symptoms and behavior towards devising the rhythm analytic machine. As a final experiment, they construct a theory kit. Probes include Kojo Eshen's book, More Brilliant Than the Sun, Jem Finer's long player installation, the album Memories of the Future by Code 9 and the Space Ape, Pinero Dos Santos's concept, Rhythm Analyse, and other things. The objects are not there as historical artifacts, but as audiovisual vectors that will acquire a new function and propel M to a new space time. The trial works. M's body stretch, stretches towards a, hi a hypersonic state of consciousness from which he is not able to return. In its place, a portal that declares time as officially ended and leaves chronology to be extracted from the virtual sphere of sound. The human body turned into a device for unleashing the unknowable logic of sonic fiction. This, according to Kojo Eshen, is speculative theory embedded in science fiction, science fiction reinterpre reinterpreted as an analysis of the ongoing present, adding to that the extraction of concepts and using them as vehicles to get to somewhere new. Sonic fiction tells the untold tales of theory by tapping into fictional spaces and radicalizing them. It is indifferent to the logic of applying philosophy to read cultures and ignores the tradition, culture, and ignores the tradition of historicizing the old methods. It goes to extremes to reject the culture of veneration, which assumes that all the important stories have been told and that we're left with merely reproducing them. It joyfully announces the end of the era of great men and creates its own, own non-foidal paradigms for thinking the world. Sonic fiction invites a body of work that on the surface seems to undertake an impossible task, human thought acquiring non-human perspective. It investigates what happens when the virus of speculation contaminates thought, activating the potency of an unlived reality, infusing the sonic event. It executes, according to Holger Schulze, a fundamental rupture by means of an altered sonic epistemology. Sonic fiction takes us further into hyperrhythm, the gateway to an alternative truth of space-time that is irreducible to the human senses, to solid structures, and to actual events. 
the zone of infected bodies relating to the world only con contingently. Better yet, of rhythm machines that, echoing Sun Ra's prophecy, can teleport the whole of the planet to a new realm through sound. Thank you.